and uh, 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 babies, you know, uh, it, it, over the years, you know, we've been doing this for a little while, you know, and, and I remember we were meeting in a, a college uh, over, uh, what was the name of that, New Hampshire College or something like that? Um, the Votex, is that what it was? So that's why you guys are on the bone board, so you can help me with these things. Yeah, Votech, uh, and uh, went over and talked to the president of the of, of the, Bible, uh, the the college, and uh, and God just gave me great favor with the guy, and uh, and he had you know he allowed us to rent two rooms, I think two rooms, right, Carolyn? Started off with two. Started off with two. Three. Three, then it grew two to three, one to two to three. And then uh, a restroom here and there. But uh, I remember um, uh, um, Patrick. You don't want me to tell that story? Oh, that's a great story. I have this vision in my mind when I was, I came out of the classroom. See, we, I was doing church in the classroom. And then we had another room we had the children in. And I came out just to check around, you know, and, and I see one of our gals who's just recently gotten married, I think, right? Yeah. Oh, she wasn't married yet? She had been married a while, but she didn't have any children. She, yeah, she had been married a while. She didn't have any children. But, <clears throat> see, we had another lady that was coming to the church, and she drove quite a ways. And she had two kids. How old were they? Two? One? Two? And, uh, <clears throat> and the way she kept her kids quiet is that she, she would stuff apples and stuff. Give them to eat them. What? Raisins, well, raisins and apple juice. That's that's prime ready for a move of God. Um, and uh, and I remember seeing her walk across the hall to the 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 you know bathroom, and and, and she's going uh, because the the child <clears throat> proceeded to just blow blow the seals out of the old. Uh, Diaper, you know, and uh, and had, we had a move. Praise the Lord! But she was uh, dry heaving. Yeah, see, that woman's going to get a reward. <clears throat> anyway, the, the golden, not the throne, but the, the, yes, yes, okay. Praise the Lord. Thank you for all coming, but uh, I, uh, I'm going to talk just a bit, not, not long, but, uh, and I mean that. Keep it up, I'm going to go long. Um, I wanted you to see this, uh, talking about the tithe and offering. Now, don't, you guys watching social media and stuff, don't turn off the set, uh, you, you, need, you, need to, you need to hear this. You know, uh, you need to, uh, I've got a book here called The Power of the Tithe. T-I-T-H-E. You know, Christians, uh, when you study the Bible, and go over to Malachi chapter, Malachi chapter 3, and... Uh, um, and some of the things I was going to touch on today, this will flow right into that. And uh, in the book of Hebrews, it says in chapter 8, I want you to see this. See, if I like to boil this uh, thing down to make it as simple as I possibly can so you can communicate to people why you are the way you are, what you do, and so forth. You, you call yourself a Christian and, uh, and why you believe that. you got people in the world today, especially they got them all over America now. They're coming through that southern border like nobody's stopping them. And uh, I'd like them all give them a bus ticket to have them go to Delaware and go to, go to that guy's house. Uh, but uh, in uh, Malachi, the, uh, the story of the tithe, see, this whole thing is basically a covenant. 
you can boil it down to a covenant that uh, God has made a covenant between man and him. And uh, this is what was going on in the book of Genesis. In Genesis, you know, God uh, reaching out to the creation. He creates Adam and Eve in the garden and so forth. And, you know, in the, uh, it, it, got, it got crazy pretty quick. Uh, God had to deal with it, you know, and I think Genesis 5 or 6, the flood came and God had to deal with that whole thing. And he's, you know, that, that was quite a time. And you want to thank God that you weren't born back in that day. You could have been born back in that day. Or you could have been born back in the Dark Ages where a certain large liturgical church shut the Word of God up in a dead language and nobody could read the Bible. That's why they call it the Dark Ages. The revelation of the Word of God talks about light, bringing light forth. In the Psalm 119, verse 105, the entrance of his word bringeth light. It brings understanding to the simple. We have a saying in the English language, that just dawned on me. That's exactly what happens when you're studying or going over certain things or hearing a, a teacher or a preacher uh, minister the word of God. There's going to be times in your life as you as you stay focused on these things and make a discipline in your life about going after the things of God. See, that's what Jesus told us to go do. He told us to go make disciples, not to just go make converts or get, get people that will come to your church once in a while. No, you, you, see, we're all about making disciples. A disciple is someone that disciplines his life after the teaching of another. And this particular individual is Jesus of Nazareth. And, uh, and so when you make the choice of becoming a disciple, you're going to go after the things that Jesus wants us to go after, the New Testament especially. The whole book is great. Uh, the book of Psalms especially, you've got the, you got the, you got the uh, history books, you've got the prophets, uh, and, uh, and all those are wonderful. The story of Israel's history is amazing, and how God set this thing up and God created and made those covenants with man the the old covenant that's how he dealt with man he made a covenant with Noah he made a covenant with Adam and Eve in the garden after they sinned um, you know they they uh, he, he you know Adam and Eve put leaves around him and Eve when they sinned uh, the anointing left them and they saw that they were naked <clears throat> and so Adam came up with an idea how to fix that and uh, God wouldn't tolerate it, wouldn't have anything to do with it. So he takes that away, and then he, next thing you see him is wearing animal skins. And to wear animal skins, blood had to be shed. And you see a sign. He doesn't go into great detail about it, but he makes a covenant with Adam and Eve. And that's why they will be in heaven. Yeah, Adam and Eve. When we take groups over to Israel, uh, we like to go to this one place, uh, yes, you know, remember I took you there. Hebron. Hebron. Hebron is where uh, Adam and Eve, that's where Adam, that's where Abraham buried Sarah. Abraham bought this cave from Ephron the Hittite and uh, because he believed Sarah, um, uh, Eve and Adam and Eve were buried there. Um, and it's, it's a pretty neat place. It's, it's highly contested. And see, these, these special places are all highly contested. The devil is, uh, you know, and you got all these so-called Palestinians. Palestinian is, a, is an Arab that's been uh, misplaced, displaced, and, uh, and they really have no legitimacy to anything. They, you know, the land is, is a covenant gift God made to the seed of Jacob. The 12 tribes came out of Jacob. And, uh, and the devil's been contesting that forever. Anyway, so, in the, in the, so when uh, we see, the, one of the first times we see uh, the tithe 
See, remember, and I, I was bringing it up here in, in, in Hebrews chapter 8, verse 6, it says now, but now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry, how much more, how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established on better promises. Talking about Jesus. Jesus is the mediator of a better covenant established on better promises. The old covenant had its promises, but the new covenant blew those promises out of the water. The new covenant that we walk in, Jesus, that's what Jesus was doing, hanging on that cross for six hours. He was cutting the covenant between him and his father. Covenant means to cut where blood flows. And while Jesus was hanging on that cross, hung on that cross for six hours, six is the number of mankind, and the, the curse of the law, the law of sin and death, came on him at 12 noon. And he bore the sin, that whole thing, the law of sin and death. He took that on himself, and that caused him to be born again the other way. He went from light to darkness. He became one with Satan. A number of Christians don't like to hear this or, uh, or think about this, but this is actually what happened. Jesus had to go and be a part of that, and it took him down into the lowest pit of hell. And when the Father, in the book of Hebrews chapter 1, Hebrews chapter 1 is a picture of God raising Jesus from the dead out of the pit of hell. It was the greatest move. And, and, and so when we are taking our little authority books and when we're looking through these things and you got Macmillan here When the Lord Jesus, the captain of our salvation, was raised from the dead, the act of resurrection was accomplished through the exceeding greatness of God's power, his dunamis, towards us who believe. According to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand. This is in the epistle of Ephesians. In the, this working, there was such a putting forth of divine omnipotence that the Holy Spirit, through the Apostle Paul, requires four Greek words to bring out the thought. Their combination signifies that behind the fact of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, there lay the mightiest working recorded in the Word of God. And which, which we, it's revealed here that the greatest exercise of God's omnipotent authority was done when he raised Jesus from the pit of hell. The courts of justice were satisfied. God spoke out and said, that's enough. And he called him back out of the dead, the place of the dead, the, the lowest part of hell. Hell has different levels. Jesus went to the lowest part. Remember when the, the thief was on the cross with Jesus and the, and the thief said, one of them said, remember me when you get into your kingdom. Remember that? Jesus had compassion on him. And he would have had compassion on the other guy too. The other guy was just reading the wrong book. And, uh, but he said, remember me when you go into your kingdom. He, and, and Jesus said, today, uh, this, day, this day I promise you, you'll be with me in paradise. See, some people read that like, this day you'll be with me in paradise. Because Jesus, when he left the cross, when he gave up the ghost, he didn't go to heaven. He went to hell. You'll see that in the book of Acts, I think it's chapter 1 or chapter 2, where uh, David said it in a psalm. Thou will not leave my soul in hell. That was a prophetic utterance about Jesus. And so God, when God raised him, after three days and three nights, God spoke down into the place of the dead and called him back up. 
And some of you are old enough to remember who Carmen was. Carmen is. Carmen's in heaven right now. Carmen was this guy who was kind of like the youth pastor of America. The uh, guy was amazing. Uh, he, he, he wrote these songs about the things of God, and uh, he did this whole video thing of uh, what he, champion. He called it champion. About the whole, the whole, uh, uh, yeah, the whole, yeah, the struggle the, of, of God, Jesus against the devil and different things. Uh, good versus evil kind of a thing. And it was quite the thing. I mean, he came to uh, Worcester, Massachusetts. And uh, I remember we took our youth group down there. And the same night, in the same city in Worcester, Massachusetts, you pronounce it Worcester. If you pronounce it Worcester, they won't think you're a flatlander. And uh, well, anyway, th- we went there, and, uh, and guess, who, guess who was in the big auditorium holding a concert that night? Uh, and, and maybe some of you were at that concert. It was the Grateful Dead. What a, what a name to name your group, the Grateful Dead. And isn't it interesting that he was in the same city where the, that whole uh, uh, performance was going on. Carmen did that whole thing of champion, which is the Grateful Life. <laughs> the Grateful Life. I am, I am, I am the, tr- how do you say it? I'm the truth. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah, I knew that. So, in this, he said, the resurrection had been opposed. Now, this is great here. This is John McCallan. That's, uh, he, he says here, having been raised from among the dead, Jesus Christ was exalted by God to his own right hand in the heavenlies. The resurrection had been opposed by the tremendous powers of the air. These are demonic powers. And that was opposing what God was doing. So when when we see this thing, when we realize that this is the greatest manifestation of God's omnipotence, because some people may think it's in the creation but there was no opposition in the creation. This was, being, this was being opposed by the principalities and the powers of the demonics. It says, all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. The evil forces of the age to come had been arrayed against the purpose of God. They had, however, been baffled and overthrown And the risen Lord had been enthroned far above them, ruling with the authority of the Most High. That's what happened when God raised Jesus from the dead, right in the way, right in the face of the devil and all his cohorts. He called him and raised him up at the right hand of majesty, seated him. And and the New Testament is bringing out for us that when he did that, he also raised us up. Every human being on the planet was raised legally when God raised Jesus. Now, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't take its vital place until they come to know Jesus. Then they have to be made aware. They have to renew their mind to what the Scripture says, the revelation of the Apostle Paul. It's called the... <clears throat> Uh, the Pauline res- revelation. So all the demonstration of the glory of God shown in the manifestation of his omnipotence pointed manward the cross of Christ with what it revealed shows us a representative man overcoming for mankind and preparing through his own incumbency a throne and heavenly ministry for those who o- should overcome through him. Christ and his people, or the church, were raised together. We were raised together. It says here, the reviving of Christ expresses also the reviving of his people. That is to say, the very act of God which raised the Lord from among the dead raised also his body. His body. Jesus is 
the, the epistle, Paul gets the revelation of this thing, and he calls Jesus the head, and we are his body. Remember that? Well, when he raised the head, he raised also the body simultaneously at the same time. So, the reviving of Christ expresses also the reviving of his people. That is to say, the very act of God which raised the Lord from among the dead raised also his body. That's us. His head and body are naturally raised together. Christ, the head, his body, the church, the ecclesia, the assembly of believers in him, the Ephesians lift, the Ephesians lifts the believer with the ascended Christ to the heavenlies, where he is made a partaker of Christ's throne. Through the elevation, hallelujah, hallelujah through the elevation of the Lord's people with their head, they are made to sit with Christ in the heavenlies, Christ's seat is at the right hand of the Father, the Father God. His people, therefore, occupy with him the same august position. This honor is not to a chosen few, but is the portion of all those who share the resurrection of the Son of God. It is the birthright of every true believer, of every born-again child of God. The right hand of the throne of God is the center of power of the whole universe, actually of all creation. And the exercising of the power of the throne was committed unto the ascended Lord. The, eleva the elevation of his people with him to the heavenlies has no other meaning than they are made sharers of the authority which is his. They are made to sit with him, that is, they, are, they share his throne. To share a throne means without question to partake of the authority which it represents. Indeed, they have been thus elevated in the plan of God for this very purpose, that they may even now exercise to the extent of their spiritual apprehension the authority over the powers of the air and over the conditions which those powers have brought about on the earth and are still creating through their ceaseless manipulations of minds and circumstances of mankind. It is necessary to state here that what is commonly understood by those who carefully study the Word of God, that the kingdoms of this world are under the control and leadership of the satanic principalities. That's going on right now. The great head of these is in the Gospel of John, three times acknowledged in the, in the book of John. Three times the, the writer acknowledges, is three times acknowledged as prince of this world by our Lord himself. His asserted claim to the suzerainty of the world kingdoms made in the presence of the Lord Jesus was not denied by even Jesus. Although a rebel against the Most High and now under judgment, talking about Satan, and now under judgment of the disposition, he is still at large. And as the masses of mankind are also rebels, he maintains over them an unquestioned because of unsuspected rule, their eyes being blinded. See, he's ruling over the people that don't know these things, that don't know Jesus, have not come into the relationship with Christ. They don't know their authority. They don't know what was purchased for them. And even many church people, even many Christians, have no idea about this revelation. But this is the revelation that was prophesied years ago that the people of God would come into at the last days. They would come into this revelation and exercise the authority needed to, to hold these forces at bay and allow God to finish what he's begun. And that's what we're seeing right now. That's why in this election coming up, it's going to be a landslide. Just hide and watch. If you don't believe it, that's fine. Hide and watch. 
Yes, it's going to be a landslide. And uh, God is going to have his way. He's going to do a short work in a, in a certain amount of time. And when that work is over, it very well could be the rapture. The rapture. You know, we've talked about in the services about um, these periods of time called, uh, oh, honey, the, the, Billy, remember she had that uh, thing up. May, maybe we have it. Do we have it? Do we have that thing? That, uh, the, uh, the different color days. I want you to see this. If you remember that in the Jewish culture, in Israel's history, they had to celebrate every 49 years. See, God was to have them have the, the land rest every seven years. And every seven times seven years, that was number 49, um, the 50th year would be called the year of Jubilee. Nice one. Uh, see, and here, here you see it right here. God, when God created the whole world, you see Adam over here on the top, way over here? And then you see the days of chaos. Then you got the Torah. That's when the Torah came between the second and the third day. And the days of Torah are day three and day four. And then, then came the Messiah. See that he came uh, between four and five. And then now, now since Jesus came and paid the price, you see this in the book of Daniel. You have your Bibles there. I want you to just go over to Daniel. <clears throat> now, we're still talking about the tithe and offering and, uh, but that's what always happens here. We'll just slide into some other things, but see, it's all good. And the covenant thing, see, this is why it's so important that you, 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 you relate to God as a covenant. And in, in the covenant, this is, this, is the, this is the main thing that you need to get a hold of. This, will, this identifies your relationship with the Father. And Jesus, now remember, on the cross, Jesus and the Father, Jesus is on the cross, and him and his Father are cutting this covenant. And so, and then, you know, um, and then Jesus, when he dies, he goes into the pit of hell for three days and three nights, and then God raised him, and the price was been paid. And now all humanity, not just the Jews, but it says the Jew first and also to the Goyim. Now heaven is opened up to them. That's where the book of Acts comes in, then the epistles. And in those epistles, especially the Apostle Paul's epistle, in, in the book of Romans, in the book of First and Second Corinthians, in the book of Galatians, in the book of Ephesians, Ephesians especially deals with the authority. And, uh, and everything that Jesus has done... Uh, to where we now, um, we are new creatures in Christ Jesus. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. But this is, this is God and Jesus cutting this covenant with each other. They're cutting this covenant with each other. That's why we have to go through Jesus to get to God. Whoso, it says, uh, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but through me. Remember that? He said in John chapter 10, he said, I am the doorway. If anybody tries to come some other way, he's a thief and a robber. And that depicts Satan. Satan has tried to come in a, without going through the proper channels. And he cannot come. He's a fallen angel, a fallen, fallen cherub. And he's, his destiny is already made out for him. And the, the a third of the angels that followed him, their destiny is already settled they and they know it they know they only have a short time and they will all be cast into the lake of fire eventually goyim it's the Gehenna. Gehenna. that's the lake of fire and so so the book of daniel chapter uh, nine it says here in verse 
23, Daniel was praying. Now, Daniel is over in Persia now. Uh, Daniel was in Babylon, but the Persians, the Medes and the Persians conquered Babylon, and Daniel just took his administration and just stepped over and became part of the Persian Empire. This is when Persia was actually in a good relationship with the things of God. They are not there anymore. They will be a goat nation. They will be, that nation will be cast into Gehenna. All the nations that are goat nations, this is, this is such a big deal, but not many churches know about it. They don't talk about it. But the, New, Ham, New Hampshire, uh, New United States of America, this is why Christians United for Israel are so important because this organization that was raised up in such a time, God used John and Diana Hagee, of all people, these cowboys down there in San Antonio. And uh, this is what is going to have America maintain their sheep nation status. We were headed, we were actually headed to be a goat nation. And the goat nations will all be cast in the Gehenna. Not individuals, but the goat nation, the nation itself. But God is changing that. God, because of our history, because of all the prayers that have gone on, because of what took place all through the years, the destiny on this country, God would not allow America to go the way of the goat nation. And that's why he raised up. This came through this past July when we were down there. It, it's, it hit me like a ton of bricks. See, this, this thing, when you look at uh, Matthew chapter 25, starting with verse 31, just jot that down in your Bible somewhere and go back and look at it. Christians read this thing and they think it's just about anybody. It's not about anybody. It's about the Jews. The Jews are God's original covenant people. You go back and look at Genesis chapter 9, Genesis chapter 10, and then Genesis chapter 12, he comes a, a man named Abram. And God begins to work with Abram, changes his name to Abraham. And in chapter 18, God comes into a covenant relationship. See, this is, this is it all revolves around a covenant relationship. When, king, when little King David, little, he wasn't king yet, he was the teenager David who saw Goliath come out there and challenge the armies of Israel. And he went after him. He, t he found five smooth stones. Remember, and he got that stone and he came, you know, Goliath comes out there and makes this big threat. You know, who are you? You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to feed you to the whatever. And, uh, and King David, David, he's not, he's not a king yet. He, 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 David was a man after God's own heart. And he had been, he grew up singing the Psalms. He grew up singing and creating the Psalms. And he grew up reading the scriptures and stuff. And he was, and he came out there and said, he goes, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that challenges the armies of God? Who is this? See, the uncircumcised thing he identifies, he, that he has no covenant with God. Circumcision was the mark of the covenant. And see, we have a covenant with God through Jesus. When we, our, the Bible says in the book of Colossians that our heart's been circumcised by the word of God when we come into this covenant with Almighty God through Jesus. Has nothing to do with being religious or religion. This is a covenant. It's a covenant. It's all about a covenant. If you don't have a covenant with God, you're on the outside looking in. But whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's how you get into this thing. Jehovah, his name's Jesus, Yeshua. Right where you are, just call on his name. Hey, Lord, I receive you as my Savior. Hallelujah. Yeah. That's nothing to do with you being religious. Yeah, he's, he wants you to come in. Praise the Lord. So, going on here and just finishing up, this, further, this is further declared to be according to the eternal purpose of the ages, which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord. God, through all the past ages, 
has had a, in view this wonderful plan of preparing in Christ Jesus a people chosen, called, and faithful whom he might place in these heavenly seats. And this, this, is, this is something else here. You know where the demonics rule and reign and have been doing that for some time? The, the principalities and powers in the heavenlies? That's where the church will be ruling and reigning during the millennial reign, during all eternity. That's where the church will be seated. Anyway, I don't have time to go into a lot of this stuff, but this, this, is, this is major stuff. Major stuff. This is why when we take these things and we, we get in, up in the morning and we do our prayer call thing, we do our praying over our city, um, and you have, you're not from Concord, well, you pray over your city. Pray over Ossipee. Pray over Go, Go, Goshen. Goshen. Yeah, you want to live in Egypt? Go ahead and pray over Goshen. And uh, Nashua. Yeah, Nashua. Where, where are you praying over? East Concord. No, Concord. Good. No, you don't have to, you don't have to say East. I'm just teasing you. Stephen, where are you? What town are you living in? Concord? <laughs> okay, just you know where you're living. Just call it out. When you, you, this is why when we all get together, I'm telling you, this, doing this, and it only takes a few minutes. It doesn't take long. You can get done with this thing in five minutes. And, uh, and going through this little book, and then you just turn loose and you start speaking over your families. You start speaking over people you know, relatives or something that don't know the Lord. You just start speaking. Now watch God begin to move in their lives. Amen. It is a phenomenon. Amen. It's happening quick. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. This is, uh, yeah, um, let me just read this here first. It says, uh, in Daniel chapter 9, it says, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression, to make an end of sins, and to make a reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and, the pros pro and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and, re and build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince, shall be seven weeks and threescore and sixty-two weeks. Um, threescore and sixty-two and two weeks. And the street shall be built again and the wall even the, in troublous times. Now, Daniel... By the Holy Ghost, this angel that is coming to Daniel and making this announcement is Gabriel. And he refers to the great leader, Cyrus. And in his first four years, when, when he moved the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, the rabbis in Israel woke up. And they began to call President Trump, Cyrus. Hallelujah. He was our 45th president at that time. And you go back to Isaiah 45, and God calls him out. Isaiah 45. And he's not done with them. He's told us before when they stole the election from him. When they said, you know, all this. And the Lord's told us in this prayer meeting on Wednesday morning that he was not done with him, and he's going to put him back in there. And you're seeing it happen. I mean, if you just, you know, three or four or five months ago, uh, they, they were throwing everything they could at him. I'm going to just give you a word of advice. If you have an attitude toward that, you deal with that attitude as soon as you can. Because God's not changing his mind. You better change yours. You want to get on the good side of God, the, gr the right side of God. Yeah, don't be spewing out any kind of negative things about him, you just remind, look in the mirror and just remind you, yes, Lord, I know that, that guy's not perfect either. What was that? It's the thing about an Apple Watch. Once in a while, it talks back to you. So, this 
tells us that from the declaration that happened back then from the angel Gabriel uh, and the Cyrus, the leader Cyrus, when he called out and told all the Jews to go back to Israel. See, they were, they were in Babylon, and Daniel saw in the writings of Jeremiah that that was going to only be for 70 years. And that 70 years came and went, and then God moved on this leader named Cyrus, and Cyrus made the declaration for the Jews to go back. See, Cyrus was reconnecting the Jews back to Jerusalem again. Even though Babylon destroyed Jerusalem and the temple, God was reconnecting them. And that's exactly what Donald Trump did when he found out and he moved on it. You know, in our, in our government, we have 100 senators, two from every state. And every one of those senators voted 100 to 0 to move the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. Now, you may think, what's the big deal? Well, yeah, it is a huge deal. America only has its embassy in the capital city of any city that we have our embassy, except Jerusalem. They had it in Tel Aviv. That had to be switched. And... Donald Trump, like him or not, he stepped out and obeyed God. Nobody else would do it. Nobody else would do it. They voted yes in the Senate, but nobody in the, in the executive branch had the guts to do it, except he did. He did, and uh, now it, it had to be done. I, I get this. Some of you might know this, but uh, I've told you a few times. It had to be done by the world ruler. And you go look up, just Google it, world ruler. Find out. You'll see, or just find out the definition of Donald. It's world ruler. That's his name. That's what his name means, world ruler. That ain't a coincidence, Doc. See, and, uh, this is the day we're in. God is showing himself strong. Yeah. Now, we're going to receive the tithes and offerings. But the thing I was connecting with the, the financial side of this thing is the covenant side and how God, we only have so, many, so much time left down here. It's obvious that things are rapidly, rapidly moving. Yeah. See, you may not see it, but you don't have the eyes that I have. There are things we are uh, uh, exposed to. The ministries, the meetings all through the years, the 50 years of meetings. I don't know what, how many years it is. It's 1977. So that, it's, it's 2024. That's not, can't be that. What, what, how many? That's 40 something. 47. 47. And all those meetings we were in, in down there in Tulsa with Brother Hagan and all those, those men and women of God, uh, and with Billy Brim and with all the men and women of God that we've been exposed to, uh, it, it, it is screaming, you know, um, pay attention. We are in it. This is, it's, it's here. And, uh, and this thing's wrapping up. This thing's wrapping up. And a lot of you know this because you've been around this a lot too with us. And, uh, and some will make fun of it and some will joke about it and stuff like that. But you don't want to have anything to do with that. You don't even want to have anything to do with people that do that. Trust me. You know, I... I Ananias and Sapphira wish they would like to have re redone what they did. Hallelujah. So we're going to receive the tithes and offerings for the church. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I tell you, the financial side of this thing is, is uh, and by the way, guess who we, we got a call from? Uh, I don't know if some of you won't even know who he is, but uh, some of you do know. Jesse Duplantis. 
Jesse called me up. And uh, he wanted to come next March 18th. But I told him, I said, Jesse, that's not really a good time. Because we, we don't want to have anything to do with any kind of winter weather or potential. You know, I don't want to put anybody on the road that I, I don't want to see on driving. So he's, he's looking. He told me that one of the times we were talking, and I, I forgot about it. But uh, Jesse, he's working, us into his he's working us into his schedule. Now, I mean, Jesse's just a precious brother in the Lord that God got a hold of. He, he was in the rock and roll business. And, uh, and he, he's, he was playing a gig down here in uh, Massachusetts. What was the name of that town? Yeah, it's not. It's north of Boston. Starts with a B. Anybody? Uh, no, it, and it's right on ninety three. Burlington's on uh, three, Route three. It's no, it's not Brockton. Uh, anyway, he was doing a, a concert, and he. He, he breaks for a break, and, and, you know, and he, going back to the green room, and his wife, Kathy, was in the green room um, watching Billy Graham on TV. <laughs> yeah, and Jesse comes in there. He's got hair down to his rear end, and, um, and it was all brown hair. And, uh, and he comes in there, and he, he sees what's on TV. He said, what are you watching him for? And she goes, well, he draws more crowd than you do. <laughs> oh, that bothered him. Oh, and, and, uh, and he goes, and he didn't tell Kathy he did this. He goes into the bathroom, and, and she's got the TV up pretty loud. And he goes in the bathroom, and he prays with Billy Graham, because he's, he's got the altar call going on. And he prays with him. And he goes back out to the finish the concert, and he's not the same. He said he went out there and changed the words of all the songs. And... Uh, yeah, and, and, and his, his life changed. And, uh, and God, this man has uh, he, tremendous favor. Uh, and, uh, I mean, that's why, I, you know, and I didn't even ask for him to come before. You know, he just, we were doing that cowboy movie together down there in 1993. Down in Texas, in Oklahoma. And he just says to me, he said, Tom, he said, uh, you know, he was, he was my boss. You ever see the movie Covenant Rider? Um, yeah, Jesse Duplantis was kind of an evil guy. And I was working for him. My name was Reno. And uh, anyway, so, uh, and we were, you know, you, you're, you're out in the, in, in the prairie and stuff with these guys at night and for a whole month. So you kind of get to know them. And he says to me, he said, uh, you know, I'll even come up and preach for you, Tom. And I said, well, praise God. And he came up here, and he loved George Whitfield, and I found that out. And so when he came up here, I took him over to Newburyport um, on motorcycles, right? You drove, you and Kathy drove in the car or something? Yeah, and uh, Jesse and I rode motorcycles over there. We went to Newbury, Newburyport and uh, into the uh, Presbyterian Church there on Federal Street. And I took him to that church. That's where George Whitfield, his, one of his heroes, preached his last message. And they, he died in the middle of the night, and they buried him in the basement of that church. That made his year. Because uh, I told him, I said, I know where he's buried. No. Yeah, I do. We'll go see it. Anyway, so, uh, so he just told me he wants to come back. And uh, I don't know how many times this will be. He's been here probably four or five times. When Jesse first came here, this place was packed. Anyway, so let's pray. We're going to pray over the offering. I want you to agree with me because, see, we're, we're receiving the tithes and offerings. The tithe is a dime out of every dollar. If you want to get involved with this, see, what you want to do is you want to tell the Lord you want to do this and get involved with it. And so you are releasing your faith too. This is putting yourself under this covenant promise. It has nothing to do with trying to get something from you, my friend. It has everything to do with God trying to get into your stuff and help you and bless you. Ask Abraham. 
My goodness, he was the, one of the most wealthy guys down there. And see, this is all the same thing. So anyway, God can touch your finances. He can touch your body. He can touch your life. He knows where all your family members are in a twinkle of an eye. He can touch them right where they are right now. As you step forward in different areas and stepping out in faith in certain areas, you know, God will respond to that. God responds to faith. Faith is an act. Faith is a, it's a corresponding action to what you're, what you're believing. And when you put forth this kind of corresponding action, God is there. And uh, I'm telling you, you cannot outgive God. Don't even try it. You, you cannot outgive God. Well, I'll tell you, go ahead and try it if you want. Um, but Father, we just thank you right now. We thank you, that, Father, this place is paid off. All the maintenance needs to be finished, Lord. I thank you, Father, for this. We thank you, Father God, for every area of this ministry, every need and every need in this body of all the people here. God knows your situations, and he wants, this is, this is how you get God in on your situation. When you put God's stuff first, he'll put your stuff first. And I'm guaranteeing you, you want God putting your stuff first, not you. You follow that? Hallelujah. Say hallelujah, Lord. If you don't see it so well, just say, Lord, show me. Open my eyes. Open my eyes to the truth of this whole deal. Open my eyes. I don't want to miss you on this. I, I, I don't want to miss an opportunity. You never want to miss an opportunity when God is in it. I'm telling you, you don't want to miss it. So thank you, Father God. And, and, and those out, out there in social media, you want to get involved, you can get involved with this thing too if you'd like. Uh, and and the, 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 I think they tell you on the, oh, it's right there. That's it right there. I have no idea what that means, but I can write a check. Hallelujah. Say glory to God. Thank you, Father God. Ushers, if you can go get the, after you're done with the offering, we'll focus on the offering right now. In Jesus' name, Father, we thank you for this opportunity. We can honor you with our tithes and offerings. Thank you, Father, that you supply all of our needs in accordance to your riches and glory. Full, hundredfold return. Windows of heaven open up over us, uh, protecting all of our resources and revenues, stre uh, st revenue streams. Protecting all of our revenue streams. And everyone that believed that, I want you to say amen. 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 I didn't hear some voices there. You want to say amen on that? Amen, um, amen is your adding your voice to it. Yes. Hallelujah. See, if you just sit here with your mouth shut, uh, people, people have gone to hell because they didn't open their mouth up at the right time. Who, who uh, how does it say it? Who's... Who, uh, remember, uh, whose report do you believe? Whose report do you believe? The Lord says one thing, the devil says the other thing. If you're getting a neg negative thing, that's always the devil. Don't, just, <laughs> he's the negative guy. God's the one that's saying, go for it. Go for it. If you're ready, I mean, go for it. Hallelujah. Some of you have been coming to church here a while, you should... This should not be a surprise to you. But I'm telling you, you'll want God's blessing on whatever you do. Steve, how long have you been coming to the church? Lost track. Lost track. He doesn't know where he lives either. And uh, now, Steve, do you know over the experience of all your being here and being a part of the ministry and stuff, uh, you've come to see some real things, right? Amen. 
Andy, you, you took over your bread route from your dad. And, uh, and then you got the company to buy it back when you were ready to retire. They were trying to steal it from you for all these years, right? That bread route. You, you had put that bread route together to where you had, you, I think you drove the least amount of miles, but you had more stores than anybody else. That's right. You put that together like that. You saw it. When you began to get involved, you, 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 uh, you were here. You didn't know anything about tithing when you came here. No, nope, but you were teachable. And, and so he began to get involved with it. Yeah, he says, it tells you to prove it. And so he did. And how many trucks did you go through? Uh, I think 42 years, I think two regular, and then that's four personal pickup trucks. You build a brand new home. You build a brand new home over there in Loudoun. And, uh, and now you... And, and now you set that thing up so well, the company wouldn't let anybody else have it. They wanted to buy it from you. And, and it was your price. <laughs> that's, that's fine. That's what happens when God's on this deal. There's others in here that have experienced a lot of stuff like that as well. That's just God. Um, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We're going to have communion, and then we're going to let you go home. Praise the Lord. It's 9.30 in, uh, in Nebraska. Just so you know. Might be the western part, but it's still Nebraska. You know, Nebraska has two time zones. Hallelujah. Okay. Okay, Psalm 105. This communion table. I'm telling you, this, this, is, this is amazing itself. The communion table. See, they, all these years, all these years paying attention to this all the time, it, it slowly seeps into you. Um, when, you're, when you're meditating on these things, and uh, Psalm 105, verse 37 and, and this is God speaking, and he says, this is, this is dealing with the children of Israel coming out of Egypt. And in verse 36, it says, he smote also all the firstborn in their land, the beginning of, and the chief substance of all their strength. He brought Israel forth also with silver and gold. God was paying the Jews back. They were in bondage. For 400 years, and they part of that 400 years, they were slaves. And here, when God was bringing them forth, he had the Egyptians pay them back big time with gold and silver. You see it right there. It says, uh, it says he brought Israel forth also with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble person among their tribes. There were 2.5 million of them coming out of Egypt. And he said, and they brought, they dumped all this precious stones on them, gold and silver. Uh, this is what they, they had this in the wilderness when they made the, uh, when they made the, uh, the, oh, the, the, uh, covenant, the, uh, you know, the Raiders of the Lost Ark, the Ark of the Covenant. They, they had the gold. They made the gold. They had the gold there. You can go online, and actually they have pictures of all this stuff that they found in Egypt. In verse there, it says, He brought Israel forth also with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble person among their tribes. Not one feeble. God healed all of them. It was 2.5 million of them. 
that came out of Egypt. And God healed all of them. When they took the Passover meal, every family was to take a lamb. They took it and, and they had a way of slaughtering the lamb. And they got, God taught the Jews how to do this. The Jews taught everybody else. You know, nobody knew how to slaughter an animal the wrong way. So you cannot leave blood inside the animal. They have to th uh, slice their throat and they hang them up and they drain the blood out of them. The, blood, the, the meat could not have blood in it. And, uh, and here, this is what they, they, they roasted it with fire and they ate the Passover lamb and they put the blood on the doorposts of their homes and stuff and the, and the, uh, the dark angel came and uh, went over them. What, what did they call it? In the, 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 uh, the, the, the angel. The angel. The death angel. That's it. The death angel passed over. They put the blood. Wherever they saw the blood, they had to pass over. See, that's why today you can take your tongue and put the blood of Jesus that's already been shed over your family and your life. And then this is why you want to utilize this. You want to learn this. This is just a tiny book. But what's laid out there, if you'll get up in the morning and take five to seven minutes, because it may take you a little longer because you've got to get used to it, uh, but you'll get out there and you begin to pray over your city and over your family and your household in Jesus' name. And uh, watch God begin to m move in your family. I'm telling you, you, you this thing is just, it's hard, I mean, hallelujah. So, so we take the blood, we take the, the bread here. The bread, which is his body, and these, in the book of John, chapter 6, Jesus is, <clears throat> now Jesus is talking here, and the Jews did not understand him either, and they uh, had a hard time, but see, this is his body. He said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. And when we take this, representing the body of Christ, his body was broken on that whipping post. He was whipped there, 39 stripes. It just opened up his back. You know, he did that for us. He took all those stripes, 39 stripes. I'm told in the medical field, there's 39 categories of diseases. And, uh, and so he took all those on us, on him, so we didn't have to take them. Yeah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So, Father, we take this. You said, I am, Jesus said this, I am the bread of life that gives life, the living bread. Your forefathers ate the manna in the wilderness, and yet they died. Verse 50, but this is the bread which comes down from heaven, so that anyone who may eat of it will never die. I myself am this living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. Also, the bread that I shall give is, the, is of the life of the world is in my flesh. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father God. Now, you may not understand all this, but don't throw it away. You just tell the Lord, Lord, I don't really see this like I know I should, but I'm trusting you that you will show it to me. You'll, it'll, it'll register to me. The light will come on. It, it will just dawn on me. Amen? So, Father, we take the bread for, for our health and our life, the Zoe life of God. From the top of our head to the soles of our feet. This is for the life in us. And we receive it in Jesus' precious name. Say, thank you, Lord Jesus. I receive my divine life and divine health. From the top of my head 
to the soles of my feet. Hallelujah. And then we'll take the cup. This is the cup of the precious blood. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The blood of Almighty God. Think about that for a while. God became a man so he could shed his blood for the remission of sin and for the healing and the wholeness of our physical bodies. And we receive that, Lord Jesus. We are so grateful in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, if there's anybody in here, you've never made Jesus Christ the, li uh, the Lord of your life, or you out there, you've never called on the name of the Lord, you can do it just right where you're sitting. Say, Lord Jesus, I receive you as my Savior. Make it personal. Hallelujah. I take it. The word take and the word receive are the same great Greek words. Just tell them I receive it. I receive you, Jesus. Thank you for revealing your plan for my life. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Do you have any announcements you need to make or anything? Okay. Now the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. And the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Hallelujah. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Shalom, shalom. Nothing missing, nothing broken. In Jesus' name. Just add your faith to it and rejoice. Amen. Well, praise God. Have a wonderful day. They're, they may have some things.